Yeah, so it, it's been a very interesting time. Um, you know, clearly, I mean, you know, like a, a lot of the you know debaters around things like A and H, we we've had a uh, had have had much more of a focus for for the A share market for for some time uh, because of the headwinds facing you know the the dominant part of the H share market, the internet sector. You know, we're probably a little bit more neutral on that now. Clearly, the A out performance uh, you know has been quite dramatic, but there are still uh, you know like details to be sorted out with those headwinds facing the internet sector, and clearly the A share market has a much larger opportunity set, um, I guess, to try and avoid some of those areas where those problems are. You know, I guess looking wider at the region, one of the areas we think is, is, is becoming a lot more interesting now is around ASEAN. You know, ASEAN has obviously been hit very, very hard by um, by, by COVID. Uh, you know, we're seeing what seems to be like at least a near-term and potentially a long-term peak in cases. Those economies are starting to recover, investment starting to happen, FDI starting to come back in. And we think that's going to start feeding, feeding through into job creation and then in, again into consumption. You know, these markets mm-hmm. have come down quite a quite a long way over over a period of time and we think that's a very very interesting you know you know aspect of the market how much can china slow down uh, in due course do you think because of all these headwinds and what would be the net impact uh, to your outlook on asean which is picking up which is improving yeah so i mean this has been a very you know interesting aspect and i guess this depends on the various markets you sort of look at. So, you know, we think there's definitely going to be a change in the nature of the economy. Uh, and, and, you know, for that aspect, you know, again, there's, there's lots of competing issues coming here. So Chinese property market slowing down clearly is going to have an impact on the commodity markets. But we're also aware that over an extended period of time now, the investment going into those commodity markets, you know, has also come down. Then you also have new demand coming in areas such as EVs. So I think you're going to see a lot more, uh, you know, breakdown of the relationships between the commodities, which used to move, you know, as one basket going forward. Uh, and I think you're going to see a lot more divergence in sort of how those perform. So bringing that back, you know, specifically to places, uh, you know, like ASEAN, you know, um, you know, clearly the, the re- reestablishment of things like travel is, is going to result in a bit of a headwind for, for markets like Thailand, where that's been very, very dramatic. However, for markets like Indonesia, uh, you know, we think that, you know, there's a bit of reliance on coal, but those exports have become a much smaller part of the market. The investment going to those markets has been, has been a lot less. So, you know, markets like Indonesia and, you know, over time, increasing the markets like the Philippines probably, um, stand in quite a good position.